Who was Eleanor Roosevelt? By Gare Thompson. Who was 13 Eleanor Roosevelt? During the 1930s and early 1940s, Eleanor Roosevelt was our country's first lady. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was President of the United States then, was her husband. There have been more than 40 First Ladies of the United States. What made Eleanor Roosevelt so special? Well, for one thing, Eleanor was First Lady longer than anyone else was. FDR, as he was called, was elected president four times. Eleanor was First Lady for 12 years from 1933 to 1945, when FDR died. Before Eleanor, First Ladies gave dinner parties. They gave teas. But they did not speak out on important issues concerning our country. That's what the president did. Eleanor Roosevelt, however, worked while she was First Lady. She wrote newspaper columns and books. She gave radio interviews and taught classes. She worked hard to help start the United Nations. Eleanor had opinions and shared them with the world. She let people know what she thought about important issues of the time, such as equality for all Americans. Eleanor Roosevelt paved the way for the first ladies who followed her. Now, most first ladies have a cause. Some have focused on the danger of drugs, others have fought for better schools and libraries, and others for health care. Eleanor Roosevelt was a smart and brave first lady. And even after she left the White House, Eleanor continued to work. By the time of her death in 1962, Eleanor Roosevelt was known as the First Lady of the World. Chapter 1 Early Years It was spring, 1887. Eleanor Roosevelt was almost three years old. She was very excited. She was going to cross the Atlantic Ocean on a great ship, the Britannica. Her father, whom Eleanor adored, had told her about the different countries that the family would visit. The Britannica left from New York City's harbor. On the very first day of the voyage, the fog was very thick. Ships coming into the harbor could be heard, but they could not be seen easily. Suddenly the sound of ripping steel filled the air. Another ship had rammed into the Britannica. Was the Britannica going to sink? Would every one drown? People on board panicked. Eleanor's father got her mother, her aunt, Eleanor's nurse, and himself into a boat. But where was Eleanor? She was still on the deck of the ship. As the lifeboat was lowered into the ocean, her father saw her. He pleaded with her to jump into his arms. Jump, little Nell, jump. I'll catch you, cried her father. But Eleanor was too scared. Finally, Eleanor let go of the sailor holding her, and she fell into her father's waiting arms. The lifeboat took them safely to shore. And Eleanor was able to calm down. But that terrible. Day stayed with Eleanor all her life. It took her years to overcome her fear of water and boats. Even so, that fearful little girl became a fearless, famous world traveler. Eleanor Roosevelt was born on October 11, 1884, in New York City. She was named Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. She was called Eleanor because her mother's name was also Anna. Eleanor's mother was known for her great beauty. Her father, Elliot Roosevelt, was a smart, dashing gentleman. They both came from rich and successful families. They could trace their ancestors back over 200 years. At the turn of the century, rich and poor people lived very different lives. In New York City, the rich lived in mansions. They had servants who waited on them. The rich all seemed to know one another. They married one another. The men worked as bankers, lawyers, or in a family business. Women did not work. They stayed home, entertained, and visited one another. It was important to dress fashionably and look lovely. Eleanor knew she did not have her mother's beauty. She thought of herself as an awkward and ugly child. She sensed that her mother was disappointed in her. 
she felt that she could never please her. Yet Eleanor knew that her father loved her dearly. And she, in turn, wanted to please him and make him proud of her. New York City Tenements In the late 1800s and early 1900s, poor people lived in small, crowded buildings called tenements. Whole families often lived in one, small room. Everyone in the family worked, including children. Some started when they were only eight years old. Very few poor children went to school. Many of the poor lived in a part of New York City called the Lower East Side. They worked in the factories, earning just pennies each day. Factories were dangerous places where accidents happened. It was a hard life, but one that many people faced when they first came to the United States. Chapter 2 Daddy's Little Girl Eleanor's father called her Little Nell. Her nickname came from one of her father's favorite books by Charles Dickens, The Old Curiosity Shop. Charles Dickens was a popular English author who lived in the 1800s and wrote many famous novels, such as A Tale of Two Cities and David Copperfield. Elliot Roosevelt was a great reader and loved to tell stories. Often, he entertained Eleanor by telling stories. Eleanor later said that her father always made her feel brave. She tried to do things that she knew would please her father. She loved to Eleanor's mother, however, was a colder parent. She did not hug Eleanor or play with her. She called Eleanor Granny because Eleanor was such a quiet, serious little girl. Eleanor said that when she heard herself called Granny, she wanted to sink through the floor. Eleanor looked so serious because she did not like to smile. She wanted to hide her buck teeth. When Eleanor was a child, dentists did not know how to straighten teeth with braces. So Eleanor rarely laughed Eleanor because she thought people would think she was ugly. Eleanor heard people talk about what a beauty her mother was. Reporters wrote about her mother in the society pages. No one told Eleanor that she was pretty. No one except her father. He reminded Eleanor that in Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Ugly Duckling, the duckling turns into a beautiful swan. He said that would happen to Eleanor, too. Eleanor could not wait until she turned into a swan. Until then, Eleanor promised herself that she would be the best girl that she could be. And she tried. Eleanor's mother often got headaches. Eleanor rubbed her forehead to make the headaches go away. It made Eleanor happy to be able to help her mother. Eleanor later wrote that these times together made her feel useful and wanted. Eleanor also had a baby brother. Elliot Roosevelt Jr. was born in the fall of 1889. She loved being the older sister. Her relatives told Eleanor that she was a sweet and good girl. When Eleanor was almost six, she and her family sailed for Europe again. This time, Eleanor enjoyed the trip across the Atlantic. Her father promised nothing bad would happen. And it didn't. Eleanor loved the time that the Roosevelts spent in Italy. She and her father rode in gondolas in the canals of Venice. They tossed pennies into the volcano Vesuvius. The pennies were thrown back at them covered in lava. Eleanor rode a donkey on mountain paths. The guide did not have shoes and his feet often bled as he walked on the rugged paths. So Eleanor bought him a pair of shoes. This simple act of kindness was typical of Eleanor. All her life, the hardships of others touched her very deeply. The time in Europe was not always happy, however. Eleanor's father often drank too much. Finally, he got help for his problem at a hospital in France. His family settled nearby. Eleanor's mother was expecting another baby. While her mother prepared for the birth of her baby, Eleanor lived at a French school run by nuns. She was only six years old. Eleanor could not speak French and she missed her family. She was very lonely. She wanted the attention of the nuns, she wanted the other girls to notice her. One day, a girl swallowed a coin. The nuns called a doctor. Everyone fussed over the little girl. 
That gave Eleanor an idea. She told the nuns that she had swallowed a coin, too. But she hadn't. And the nuns knew it. They did not call a doctor. Instead, they called her mother who took her out of the school. Anna Roosevelt was very angry with Eleanor. She told her never to lie again. Eleanor felt terrible. All she had wanted was some attention. On June 2, 1891, Eleanor's brother Hall was born in France. Her father was with the family when Hall was born. Now Eleanor went to a nearby school in the mornings. In the afternoons, she and her father took long walks and fed the ducks in the park. Eleanor said that her father was the only one who did not treat her as if she were a criminal. But her father became ill again. He went to a hospital near Paris. As soon as Eleanor's mother could travel, in early summer, the Roosevelt family returned to New York without Eleanor's father. One day, an aunt of Eleanor's found out that she could not read. Eleanor was almost seven years old at the time. Her aunt was furious and told Eleanor's mother that Eleanor must learn to read, so, and cook immediately. Like other rich New Yorkers, Anna Roosevelt wanted her children taught at home. So she started a school on the third floor of their house. A few of the neighbors' children came, too. At first, Eleanor was shy. The other children knew more than she did. She couldn't spell simple words. Her mother, who sat in the back of the room, told her to try harder. Eleanor did. By the end of the first year, she was the best reader in her class. Eleanor also learned to sew, but she never learned to cook. Finally, Eleanor's father returned home. He was feeling better, but was weak. Often he had to stay in the hospital for months. However, when her father was home, they went on walks again and talked about books. He taught her to feed the horses with a lump of sugar or a piece of apple. They studied nature together. Eleanor's father taught her to open her eyes and really look at the world around her. He always asked Eleanor what she was thinking. From her father, Eleanor learned to question things and to seek answers for herself. The Roosevelts were rich, but Eleanor's father wanted her to respect poor people and appreciate what she had. One week around Thanksgiving, her father took her to a home for poor boys' newsies, they were called. The newsies sold newspapers on the street corners of New York City. They earned about a nickel for every ten papers they sold. They were supposed to sell the papers after school. Instead, most boys skipped school to sell more papers. Many were orphans and not much older than Eleanor. They were poor and hungry. Eleanor's grandfather had started the home for the newsies. So Eleanor and her father brought lots of holiday food to the boys. Eleanor felt terrible for them. She saw how important it was to help people in any way that she could. It was a lesson that her father taught her. It was a lesson that she would never forget. Chapter 3, All Alone Shortly after her seventh birthday, Eleanor's life suddenly changed. When she was a child, many of the medicines we have today had not yet been discovered. Many diseases that now can be cured often killed people. One such disease was diphtheria. People with the disease ran high fevers and had trouble breathing. They grew weaker and weaker. Often they died. In the fall of 1892, when Eleanor was eight, her mother had to have an operation. Afterward, she was very weak. Then she got diphtheria. She became so ill that Eleanor was sent to live with relatives. Her father was away, to once again try ing to stop drinking. Eleanor was all alone. What would happen? Would her mother get well? On December 7, 1892, Eleanor's mother died. Eleanor was only eight years old. Eleanor wrote about that terrible day. She was standing by a window in her aunt's house. Her aunt came into the room to tell Eleanor what had happened. 
Eleanor wrote, death meant nothing to me, and one fact wiped out everything else my father was back and I would see him very soon. Eleanor was a shy, lonely girl. She knew that she had never pleased her mother. And now, she would never have the chance to do so. It made her miss her father more than ever. Eleanor hoped she and her brothers would now live with him. But that was not to be. Eleanor and her baby brothers were sent to their mother's mother, Mrs. Hall. The family felt that Eleanor's father could not care for the children. His drinking had gotten worse. And so, Eleanor began a new life with her strict grandmother. All Eleanor had of her father were his letters. She looked forward to them, cherished each one, and wrote back immediately. Eleanor's aunts and uncles still lived at home with her grandmother. They were not much older than Eleanor and treated her as a younger sister. They loved sports and taught her to play tennis. They also loved music and languages. Eleanor's grandmother had her tutored in French, German, and piano. Then on August 14, 1894, the worst thing that Eleanor could imagine happened. Her father died. He had just sent Eleanor a letter. He wrote, I hope my little girl is well and never forget I love you. Eleanor kept this letter for years. It was her grandmother who broke the news. Eleanor was almost ten. Everyone thought that Eleanor would weep and shut herself in her room for days. But she didn't. After she was told, she was quiet as a mouse. All she said, in a whisper, was, I did want to see him again. Eleanor was now an orphan. No mother. No father. And then, shortly after her father's death, her brother Elliot died of diphtheria. Just as their mother had. Eleanor was just a child, yet already there had been so much sadness in her life. From then on, Eleanor watched over her baby brother, Hall. She became like his mother. She taught him things and tried to protect him for the rest of his life. For the next four years, Eleanor retreated into a dream world. In this world, she lived with her father and was pretty and happy. When she was not dreaming, Eleanor escaped into books. One of her favorite places to read was high up in a tree. Eleanor felt safe there. One bright spot in her life was visiting Long Island. That's where her Uncle Teddy Roosevelt lived. He was her father's older brother. He was a rising star in politics in New York. He was full of life and adored the lonely Eleanor. When Eleanor came to visit, he would greet her with a big bear hug and tell her that she was his very favorite niece. He loved that Eleanor tried hard at games even though she was sometimes clumsy and fearful. Eleanor would leap into piles of hay from the barn loft or she would run straight into the ocean. Uncle Teddy made Eleanor forget that she was in plain, unusually tall, and gawky girl. Instead, she felt special. But her grandmother Hall did not really like. Her uncle Teddy, so as time passed, Eleanor got to spend less and less time on Long Island. And so, Eleanor passed her days at her grandmother's home in New York City. She studied. She read. She went to the theater with her aunts. But Eleanor wanted more. She wanted to explore the world. And finally, when she was 15, she got her wish. Eleanor's grandmother agreed to send her to school in England. For Eleanor, this was her chance to make a new life for herself. Theodore Roosevelt Theodore Roosevelt was President of the United States from 1901 to 1909. He was a weak child and often sick, but worked to make himself strong. He spent long hours lifting weights and pounding a punching bag. He also loved the outdoors. As an adult, he liked to ride, swim, and hunt. Roosevelt was a man of action. He built the United States into a world power, many people thought he was one of our fairest presidents. He worked hard for the poor, during his presidency, the first national parks were opened. The teddy bear is named for him. 
Chapter 4, Years at Allenswood It was 1899. Eleanor sailed to England with one of her favorite aunts, Aunt Tissy. Eleanor said her aunt was always kindness itself to me. Her beautiful aunt loved adventure in life, and she wanted Eleanor to have a wonderful time in England. The Allenswood School was only a short train ride from central London. It was a very small school for the daughters of rich European aristocrats. Eleanor wondered if she would fit in. After all, she was American. She was tall and plain. And she worried her dresses would be out of style. But she was well-read, spoke several languages, and was smart. She hoped that she would make a few friends. Madame Marie Sylvester was director of the school. She was short and stout with a cap of wavy, snow-white hair. Her eyes sparkled with intelligence, and she was a forceful speaker. Eleanor impressed her immediately. Within her first week at school, Eleanor had made a name for herself by speaking out and having strong opinions. Eleanor was no longer shy. She became one of Madame Sylvester's top students. Eleanor was thrilled and continually pushed herself to live up to Madame Sylvester's high standards. The other girls at Allenswood respected this new American girl. At meals, Eleanor sat at Madame Sylvester's table. She spoke fluent in French and loved to give her opinion on anything and everything. She was a quick thinker and debated issues well. At Allenswood, Eleanor changed. The caterpillar turned into a butterfly. Eleanor was confident. She no longer walked with stooped shoulders, trying to hide the fact that she was almost six feet tall. Now, she stood tall and straight. She walked at a fast pace eager to get to class and to be noticed. Madame Sylvester invited Eleanor to join a group of students who discussed different subjects. After dinner In Madame Sylvester's library, Eleanor often led the discussions. And the other girls listened carefully to what she had to say. Eleanor was a leader. Before coming to Allenswood, Eleanor had always had a cold or a cough. Like her mother, she also had headaches. But in England, they dissat paired. Eleanor took long walks in all kinds of weather. She played sports. She felt healthy and strong. And, more importantly, she was free to say how she felt and what she thought. Madame Sylvester asked Eleanor to come along on trips with her. She put Eleanor in charge of packing and organizing the trips. Eleanor loved it. She learned she was good at reading schedules, planning trips, and packing. In Florence, Italy, the 16-year-old Eleanor explored the city alone with her guidebook. Eleanor loved the freedom. She learned to trust her own judgment. On one trip, friends of her grandmother saw Eleanor out alone. They were horrified. Back then, young girls did not travel or go about strange cities by themselves. Eleanor's grandmother demanded that she come home. So, sadly, Eleanor 